Right. Thank you, everyone. We are ready to start right on time. My name is Cristiano. I'm uh, uh, with DK from Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. You might have heard of the organization. And we have also Katerina from uh, Condor. Today, we're going to talk about Open Area Map and uh, about Open Area Map V2, or the new Open Area Map, which is in the making. So we're going to start with a quick uh, uh, introduction about what is Open Area Map, why we made Open Area Map, uh, quick history, which has become uh, uh, quite long already. And uh, uh, now we are doing an effort to uh, bring Open Area Map to a new version to provide it more features, modernize the infrastructure. And so DK will talk about the infrastructure, and Katerina will talk about the design and the design approach that we took in this. So for to start, um, we, talk, we heard from, uh, from Piero about uh, open software. Uh, and now we're talking about open data and why open imaging in particular matters. We are an organization that heavily uh, works with OpenStreetMap data. And so one of the things that I listed here is that it allows uh, open derivative data to be created. So we uh, do a lot of data creation in OpenStreetMap uh, with Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. And we need that imagery from which we derive the data to be openly licensed. And so it's really important for us that the imagery that we use has that is open and uh, freely accessible. There are other reasons why open matters for imagery. Uh, one thing that uh, I think is important is it also provides uh, access to transparent uh, information that can be used for AI ML work. Uh, it's there. Anyone can verify because the imagery is available to anyone. So recapping quickly from uh, 2006, uh, how Open Air Map uh, uh, was started. Uh, 2006 was the first years when uh, drones or remote control airplanes were started to be used with uh, digital, digital cameras to capture aerial imagery. So the beginning of the, the, drone, I, the, the drone technology for consumers. All the way to 2010, humanitarian and stream map team started around that time, uh, responding to the Haiti earthquake. Uh, and there was a lot of imagery made available by satellite imaging companies to respond to the earthquake. And we needed a place to put that imagery to trace and create data in OpenStreetMap for the responders. The, day, the idea further developed until 2014 when HOT humanitarian OpenStreetMap team submitted a proposal, won a grant, and in 2015, we were able to start the design and the development of the first open air map. So Kate Chapman, who was here earlier in the, in the conference, presented a, a SOL in 2015 of Phosphor-G, the initial idea of open, stream map, of open air map. And uh, um, since then, many other uh, organizations and people that are here today have contributed. And I don't have a slide with all the contributors like Piero attempted for <laughs> Drone DB, but uh, uh, no web ODM, ODM. But um, they're on the on the website for Open Air Map and the About page. Um, and uh, since then, there has been some little improvements, but pretty much what we have in Open Air Map is what we have, what we had in 2015, 2016, and 17 when we built the software. So it's a little bit outdated. In 2021, 20, uh, we had some uh, uh, funding, or HUD was able to secure some uh, funding to work on a redesign of Open Air Map. And so that's where we are here. That's where we are today with uh, Contour. Uh, we started working on the design part, and the development is going to start uh, soon with a target of uh, the next, early next year to have it functional. And so DK will also talk about that. Quickly, some of you might have heard or even used Open Aerial Map, uh, but the idea was to make a system or a distributed network of images or image, image nodes, and, and then create an interface to be able to browse 
uh, access the data and upload imagery to contribute the imagery to open area map. In this case, uh, we're looking at what the browser looks like today. Uh, it's a map with tiles that show based on the uh, shading of the, of the blue where the images are. Once you click on the images, then you can access the image and uh, um, download it or stream it, we'll see it. Um, there are, m most of the images in open aerial map are from drone mappers, so you will find a lot of those, but we also have cell imagery that has been released for, mostly for humanitarian uh, uh, applications or uh, response. In this case, we have Maxler imagery that was released for, uh, through their open data program as a compatible open license. It, we, uh, it was uploaded to open area map. There's a set of uh, uh, basic metadata that needs to be entered when you upload the imagery into open area map. And so there's this component, which is the uploader, where you do that. And when you zoom in to one of the images in open area map, you have the option to download it to directly access the uh, image through TMS, WMTS. And you see basic metadata that uh, tells you information about the image. Uh, in this case, we're seeing the same image that we saw before inside the ID editor, the OpenStreetMap editor, coming in through uh, the time map service. And uh, the same image in uh, QGIS the, through the WMTS uh, service. So the idea was to build a simple and highly available infrastructure. Right now, Open Air Map, the, the current version, is hosted on uh, AWS. And uh, this is the workflow on getting the image up into a, a, an instance that processes the image. It puts it into an highly available bucket, an S3 bucket. Uh, and then through a Lambda service, a serverless service, we provide those tiles through the WMTS and TMS services. What happens when uh, you upload the image into the upload? The raw image gets uploaded to, uh, to that server, gets compressed and optimized. Uh, you've heard in other talks about COG, and uh, saved on the cloud storage. Open Air Map, thanks to some smart developers that are here in, at the conference, it was one of the first systems that implemented COG, and I don't know when it was, like 2017, around 18, and it's still working exactly like it is, like it was at the time, and serving tiles off of that uh, format after so many years. <laughs> um, and we heard uh, in, the, in the last two presentations about uh, ODM, Open Drone Map, and web ODM. One uh, very uh, reliable thing that we have after many years and many things that have broken because we haven't really maintained the, the, the core uh, uh, software. But one thing that really works well is the connection with web ODM. You process the images in web ODM and automatically it gets uploaded through this plugin to uh, open air map. So one, when you have your drone images, you process them, create a mosaic, and then it gets automatically uploaded into open air map. Um, there are some things that we're hoping also to address as part of the development and design that we are doing. Uh, two key things. One is about the imagery licensing. There are different uh, efforts to try to have a set of uh, uh, licenses for imagery or for EO data, but many times we're still using Creative Commons, ODBL, or public domain, but I think it's important that we start thinking about a license specifically for EO data or even better for, uh, for imagery. And the same for metadata. Um, there are things that are being developed now as part of Stack. Uh, there are efforts within ISO GC to have uh, uh, those profiles, but uh, something simple, easy to fill out, but someone that doesn't have that background in uh, metadata, if that's even a, a background. <laughs> uh, it's something that we need so that we can easily have a, a drone pilot upload the information that we need to be able to index that uh, and, and, and search that, that, that imagery. 
So why the redesign? I think I mentioned it. It's been many years that since we first developed the first version. I think we still have uh, many more people happy that they are able to upload the imagery onto OpenAI Map and use it and for their different applications, also beyond humanitarian applications, than those that are complaining that things are broken because yes, we haven't really uh, we haven't been able to really fix some of the code uh, since then. But it's amazing that after seven years, it's mostly still working fine uh, exactly on that technology from the, from the time. So um, yeah, the goal is really to increase accessibility, modernize the stack. And so we'll see now with the uh, approach in the design and then in the proposed uh, um, implementation options uh, how we're gonna do this. And uh, so I'll leave it to Katarina for the design part. Thank you, Cristiano. Hope you can hear me. <laughs> uh, so I will tell you about uh, redesign approach uh, that we applied to this project and about main outcomes and uh, some insights. So we applied a design thinking approach for this project because we didn't know at the beginning what the main problem for users and uh, we needed to extract uh, this information and uh, find the more pain points uh, on the user workflow. And uh, uh, we, have had, uh, we have had four phases, you can see it here. At the first phase, discovery, we identified the main uh, stakeholders who can be benefited by uh, open uh, aerial map redesign. Then uh, we interviewed them to gather main user flows and create user personas card to, to easy work with user needs uh, and common goals. Then at the second, uh, at the second phase, uh, we created uh, some uh, design proposal. Uh, it was uh, a lot of ideas how to improve uh, open aerial map, but uh, we prioritized uh, these uh, ideas and for most viable of them created an uh, interactive prototype. And uh, the uh, testing fa uh, phase, uh, we uh, showed our prototype to real users and um, checked if they really understand what we, uh, uh, if it's really better for them. And uh, the last uh, phase, uh, we uh, checked the feasibility of the proposed uh, solution because, uh, of course, uh, current architecture uh, doesn't support uh, some features and uh, it was uh, designed several architect architectural approaches. How better to um, implement this um, uh, changes. So let's go to some more cute visuals, maybe. <laughs> uh, and uh, um, at the first phase, as I said, we gathered information about main stakeholders. Uh, there is two main um, purpose for this. First one is to invite to workshops and interviews just relevant people who can give uh, really uh, some actual information, real pain points. And uh, the second purpose is uh, not to miss um, anyone, to cover as more user groups as possible. Actually, we covered almost all of them, just maybe government was not covered properly, but we tried. And you can see some names of uh, the company uh, we reached uh, during this process. And uh, then uh, when we had some talk with the main stakeholders, uh, we realized that uh, there are some main um, like general user flows uh, and uh, created based on this information such cards, uh, we call it user personas. User personas are fictional characters, uh, so they uh, um, present uh, um, some, some, let's say, um, uh, maybe type of user, and for each user we gathered uh, current flow, needs, and pain points. Uh, here you will see just three of them, three of them, because we concentrated only on these three personas. So it can be, of course, more, but uh, uh, during this project we concentrated and uh, concentrated on these. Uh, first uh, persona is mapping project manager, is person who. Um, manage, coordinate, uh, work around uh, um, mapping, 
and uh, search for best images, uh, maybe a recent one, and uh, usually wants to share this information using some link uh, to use this information for different uh, external uh, applications and tasking manager, for example. And main need, of course, is access as many images as possible and find some relevant. Uh, Second persona is immature contributor, is person who bring, uh, uh, brings uh, his data to the uh, system. And uh, this persona wants to just uh, quickly upload this, uh, his uh, information without any uh, maybe uh, uh, loan processing and some um, uh, errors because uh, yeah, it can it can give it can lead us to. Um, to the, this person can leave for the um, application because it's not very beneficial from the um, from the application. It, it's only you want to upload uh, some share some information. And uh, the last persona is a GIS analyst. Of course, it's quite similar as uh, uh, first one, but uh, usually uh, uh, they has more. Um, exact uh, uh, requirements for data, maybe some resolution or some uh, data, um, some, some dates. And uh, this persona downloads uh, images to a local machine and then uh, uh, process it using different software. So uh, for each persona we uh, gathered, uh, we call it pain points, so problems uh, that these personas have. And uh, we just uh, will see some current uh, situation and some proposed uh, solutions uh, for UX perspective. So now you can see main screen where people uh, see uh, some coverage by images and it's a grid cell. And uh, usually it's not so um, uh, transparent uh, how many images in your area of interest that there is. So you zoom in, zoom in to your uh, maybe city and uh, yeah, it looked pretty good before, but when you zoom, you can see just uh, several images. So we proposed uh, some clusterization. You can see a number of images without uh, any hovering. And uh, uh, also you should see um, left panel uh, connected to the map because uh, the current solution, you cannot do it. Uh, second uh, scenario is uh, filtering. Now filtering options is uh, a bit poor. You can see the, this here. So last week, last month, last year. It's not these filters that users need. And uh, um, there, there are some proposals about uh, extending the filter list and also introducing timeline as a, um, as a way to filter images by dates because it's uh, convenient and easy to use. Next uh, user scenario is uh, searching by area of interest. And um, uh, now you can also search by images uh, within the grid cell. And you cannot see any images on the map, just on the left side. So uh, we propose uh, to, uh, to um, filter by area of interest using some uh, search by uh, uh, administrative boundary or even freehand geometry. Of course, uh, it's a good idea to show all images at the same time and uh, highlight the area of interest to, to, to show it vis visually clear. Um, actually, image page uh, is not so painful, uh, just for some decisions, uh, there are not a lot of information, and uh, you cannot see any context, uh, so just, you can see just uh, one image uh, at one time. So, um, uh, just uh, we can uh, add more data, all data that we can uh, get from the uploading and uh, show if uh, there are any images near this one. Uh, yeah, it, it gives more context. And all previous uh, pain points was related to uh, people who consume images, but a uh, person who uploads images on also faced with some issues. Usually, um, this is not clear how to fill in some fields, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, uploading is crashing, and uh, it's not uh, so clear why. Uh, yeah, it's uh, usually uh, 
some classical approach to add some more hints, uh, maybe rename some fields, and then uh, we decided to, that uh, some fields can be prefilled and uh, even removed. And uh, we added some suggestions about uh, way how we could um, check uh, images uh, before uploading, just uh, not to crash it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, because of all the uh, previous uh, improvements uh, that we introduced, of course, uh, some changes in architecture is needed. Uh, there is uh, some generic architecture of uh, open RLM map, and uh, I'll give the floor to DK. He uh, will tell you in details about architecture changes. Hi. All right. So, we're going to real quick talk about architecture. I don't have a lot of time, but... Um, yeah, as you can see here, there's, uh, this is broadly not too unchanged from how OAM is currently running, but uh, to really sort of make sure we're implementing some uh, important technologies that uh, will su su support the, uh, the design, including user profiles, actually being able to manage user profiles um, and give uh, these images uh, a connection to, to an, a person. Um, uh, as well as, uh, of course, implementing the Stack API for interoperability, for uh, for the ability to share uh, across outside of even Open Aerial Map. Um, uh, we have a Dynamic Tiler. It's about seven years old, and there's been a lot of changes to how Dynamic Tilers are built. So, uh, yeah, um, and then yeah. So we'll just look at some finer details on like how this might be implemented. Some guidance from the team. Um, you probably have seen many of these logos. Uh, there are so many open source solutions, um, and OpenAIMAP is a, a stack of tools that uh, relies on many currently and uh, will continue to uh, rely on this community. Um, and then, of course, we do run on AWS, so there are some uh, ways of running all of this on AWS as well. Uh, and let's see, last one, yeah, with Contour as well. Um, they have lots of tools that they uh, have built themselves. Um, and so we are looking at, uh, the, the guidance that we were given uh, through all of these is sort of just to show that there's a lot of options. We have a lot uh, of work to do to research and understand um, the best way to implement open area map in its next phase. Um, just a quick roadmap. What's our time? Yeah. We're good? Okay. Uh, this is a, a very loose roadmap that we developed um, just to honestly, for a lot of things, just as a project management, but in the second line, uh, we're looking at uh, Q1 uh, 2023 for some first beta implementation of, of the technology. Um, and lastly, just some, some ways to get in touch. If you are a user of Open Area Map, uh, please get in, in touch with us. Tell us your stories, tell us your successes, tell us your pain points. Um, we are still open to a lot of feedback. And then also, please get in touch with Contour as well. Um, it's been... Uh, I think a huge success story for us as, a, as an organization of being able to work with a partner to do uh, something like design. Um, a lot of technology maybe sometimes comes into play from honestly happenstance. And so when we're given the opportunity to uh, work with people and do something like this, uh, I think we're able to great, create really great products that provide a great service. So uh, yeah, thank you.